Food bloggers, hi, how are you today? Thank you so much for tuning in to the Eat Blog Talk podcast. This is the place for food bloggers to get information and inspiration to accelerate your blog's growth and ultimately help you to achieve your freedom, whether that's financial, personal, or professional. I'm Megan Porta, and I've been a food blogger for over 12 years. I understand how isolating food blogging can be at times. I'm on a mission to motivate, inspire, and most importantly, let each and every food blogger, including you, know that you are heard and supported. This is one of the most relevant topics that we can discuss this summer because I personally know a lot of food bloggers who are going through this right now and it stinks. It's discouraging. It's hard. Jessica Scully from Paleo Scaleo joins me inside this episode to talk about something that happened to her recently, which was dramatic instant traffic loss. She has no idea why it happened. There was really no explanation but it happened. So she had to somehow pick herself up and move forward and keep blogging despite the discouragement. I know a lot of you are experiencing this as well, and I'm so sorry you are. Hopefully this conversation will give you a little bit of encouragement and inspiration to keep moving forward despite whatever's going on. This is episode number 437, sponsored by Rank IQ. Hey, food bloggers, are you wanting to tap into additional revenue and improve your site experience for your users? If so, Chicory might be a great solution for you. Chicory is a leading monetization platform for food bloggers, enabling you to integrate highly relevant shoppable ads into your recipe content and earn revenue from top CPG brands. Chicory's hyper-contextual ads and shoppable technology will help you improve your site experience and engagement, allowing your readers to go from inspiration to checkout in just a few clicks. Enjoy easy installation and ongoing access to the Chicory team at zero cost to you. Chicory makes it easy to track your earnings, optimize your blog content using recipe insights, and connect with its team. Plus, with integrations with leading ad networks like Mediavine and 60 plus retailers, Chicory makes it simple to start earning revenue today. Head to eblogtalk.com forward slash resources and scroll down to the Chicory logo. Click the button underneath the logo that says learn more about Chicory. Go to eblogtalk.com forward slash resources to get started today. Jessica began her journey into food blogging after her family had a house fire and had to move out for 11 months. Blogging became a hobby to distract her mind, then grew into a business. A former gym owner, personal trainer, and homeschool mom to her five-year-old, Jessica has been running the food blog since 2015 and has seen her fair share of ups and downs. Hello, Jessica. Thanks for being on the podcast. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yes, I'm very excited to dive into this topic because it is relevant for many people. Unfortunately, before we get to that, what is your fun fact that you're going to share with us? My fun fact is that I have a master's degree in forensic psychology, and I spent 10 years working in police departments doing criminal intelligence analysis and studying gangs. Oh, that I sounds <laughs> intense. <laughs> it was. But also super interesting. Yeah, very interesting. And such a far cry from food blogging. Wow. Yes, yes. Wow, so you've got the whole scope of projects that you've worked on. But speaking of food blogging, tell us about your journey. Where did you start? When? How has your blog evolved? Sure. So I started my blog in, actually in 2015 was like the first iteration of it. We actually had a house fire at our home and we moved out for 11 months and we were in a rental house and I started cooking and making recipes a little bit more in the kitchen because I was kind of trying to distract my brain from what was going on and give myself something else to focus on. And as I started making the recipes, we started saying, these are pretty good. I want to write this down so that I can make it again. So I just started this little website. It's not the one you'll see today. Mm -hmm. And so I started that and had no idea what I was doing. I was just kind of documenting for myself. And at the same time, I was working for a company that I was working in tech support and the company was, their website was built on WordPress. So I learned the whole back end of WordPress, how all the functionality, how everything worked, And basically took everything that I learned from there and applied it to my food blog. 
and set up hosting and set up everything and then just slowly learned how to do better photography and optimize everything and gain some traffic and just really kind of put my nose to the grindstone, qualified for Mediavine and have just kept going since then. Amazing. Sorry about your fire. That's devastating. It's okay. It was a long time ago. Yeah. So at what point did you start your new food blog? I know you had an old one and then this is your new one. What year did you start your new food blog? It was probably within 2015 or 2016. It was just the old one wasn't really, I mean, it was the same thing. It was just not hosted. Yeah. It was like wordpress.com. Gotcha. Okay. Right. So not wordpress.org. Yeah. Yeah. So then I just, I learned all of that from the company I was working with and I would have my work in open in one window and my blog open in the other window. And it was kind of rinse and repeat. Like if I applied it over here, then I would go over to my blog and be like, Oh, now I know how to do that. And I applied it. So that was kind of how I built the entire website. Okay. So you got into Mediavine fairly quickly. Did it take a year or two? How long did that take? Yeah, that took a little while. At the time that I qualified for Mediavine, their requirements were less than they are now. So I had a little bit of, I don't know, you know, a little bit of better chance there. I think they were at 30,000 and now they're 50,000. So it was a little bit easier for me to qualify for that. I think it took me maybe like a year, year and a half. Okay. And then at that point, your traffic just continued to grow over time? It did. I was... I was posting pretty regularly. I was doing a lot of work on it. And I will say that over the years, I have kind of ebbed and flowed away from it at times when I've been able to focus on it and times when I've kind of drifted away from it. But at that time, I was posting a lot and obviously trying to qualify. So I was kind of pushing in a lot of different areas, trying to get my traffic up. Okay. And then I know recently-ish, you have experienced some traffic loss So tell us about that. So I've had a lot of different careers and a lot of, I've done a lot of different things. Obviously we started with the the forensic psychology and went into the, you know, tech support and all of those things. And I've worked in other areas too. I also used to own a gym and I was focused very heavily on growing that. That was a brick and mortar business. And so I was focused very heavily on growing that and I wasn't doing a lot of posting on the blog, but I was still kind of keeping an eye on it and checking on it and everything was pretty steady. And then in March of 2022, it literally just nosedived. Like there is a vertical line in Google Analytics that starts in March of 2022 that just makes like a very sharp slope down. And I couldn't figure out what caused it. I researched everything I could. I tried to post in a bunch of the Facebook groups. I tried to post in Food Blogger Central a couple of times. I tried to post in the Mediavine group a couple of times. And I just said, hey, is anybody else seeing this? This is what's happening to me. And I would get denied by the group admins every time. And they would say, it's Q1 or it's Q4, or please refer to the resources or, you know, search the group. Things have already been posted, but nobody was posting the same thing. And I'm like, why? I don't, I couldn't get it approved. Eventually one got approved, I think in Food Blogger Central and a bunch of people were like me, same March, 2022. So nobody really had a, this is what what I know happened. I don't know if anything happened. Was it an algorithm or like, could you pinpoint like the penguin tool? Did you research that? Like some sort of Google change? I'm sure you researched all of this. No, I mean, I looked, yeah, the, there was one change in Google where they did an update and it was, it had something to do with reviews, but I think it was more like product reviews. I think it was their update was like basically dinging sites with product reviews and having like the way that they were structured. So I was like, I don't think that's me. So I don't know. And I have a theory that I can't prove, but I think that a couple things happened. One, my niche is paleo. So everything I do is gluten-free, dairy-free, grain-free, soy-free. People are like, what can I eat? I'm like, you can eat vegetables and protein and (laughs) delicious food. But when I started the blog, that was, I think, a very popular thing. And I think there's always trends with food, right? And so I think we've gone keto and we've gone, you know, a lot of different ways. And I think that maybe attention has kind of been pulled away from that a little bit. And I hate, 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 hate to blame it on 
COVID, but I also think that people spent two years at home cooking. And around March of 2022 was when my brick and mortar business opened back up. So like, I just, did they get tired of cooking? Right. Did they get, you know, or did they, I don't know. So those are my theories. I don't know if any of them are true, but. Yeah, no, I like them. They sound like good theories to me. Okay. So how did you move forward at that point? Did you find that yourself in discouragement? Like, how are you feeling about all of that? I'm sure it was not a fun feeling. Yeah, super discouraged. So I changed my theme. I changed my host. <laughs> like, surely I can just do all of these things. And one of these things is just going to bring all my traffic back, right? But we all know that that's not actually the case. But I needed to feel like I was doing something to move it forward, right? So I'm like, okay, what can I change? I don't like this. I don't like that. Make sure my site speeds, you know, as fast as it can be. Make sure my site looks as good as it can look. So I switched all of that. Didn't really change anything. But I've really just, and I, at one point I kind of said to myself, maybe you're just done. You know, like, is this really worth the fight to, mm. to try to get it back? And maybe this is just like, it was just a season of your life and it's over. And maybe you just move on to your next project, right? But I'm pretty stubborn. And I was <laughs> like, no, I'm not going to go out like that. <laughs> I'm going to go out on my own terms. So I just, decided to dive back in. I think it's, there were a lot of things I wasn't doing, right? I wasn't posting regularly and I just needed to get more active and more back involved in it. I had backburnered it for a long time, which could have contributed to the traffic downfall, but at the same time, it was also like very dramatic, right? you know, inexplicable. So it is really, I've just kind of tried to refocus and Remotivate and pick up where I left off and see if I can change the direction of things. Well, good for you for just not giving in to the <laughs> discouragement and for picking yourself back up and moving forward. I think that a lot of people would not have made that choice. So giving yourself a pat on the back for that, I think, is huge. And then did you at that point create a more consistent posting schedule or publishing schedule? Yeah. So what I've done actually is really kind of think about like where to focus my efforts for the most impact. I've always been more on the SEO side of things than the social media side of things. I really, really don't like social media and it's like, you know, a necessary evil for your business. You've got to do it, but it's not my favorite thing to do. So I've been trying to focus on organic traffic, growing that. That's what I lost. So trying to get that back. And my sister actually has a company, a marketing company. And so we've been working together. They focus on health and wellness industry clients. And so we've been working together to kind of create a strategy from there. They focus on, are you familiar with StoryBrand? Yes. Yep. Okay. So they're a StoryBrand marketing certified Mm -hmm. marketing company. And so they've kind of worked with me along those lines to create kind of the brand script and inviting the clients into a story, right? Inviting your readers into what your story is and making it stand out so that it's not just, oh, I'm just clicking here to get this recipe and then I'm clicking away. It's like a little bit more in depth of what is this person doing and like involving them in your life and all the things that are tied into the way that we live. And so that I think has helped me remotivate and kind of refocus a lot on what I'm doing because I have almost like a framework, Mm. if that makes sense, Yep. of the story that I'm trying to tell. I love story brand. I did this a few years ago. I read the book, building is it building a story brand? Mm -hmm. I read it and then I was like, I have to do this for every part of my business because it's so powerful creating, like you basically create the story around who you're serving, why, like you get into the nitty gritty details and it clarifies everything. So you just did this, like you created your avatar and their problems and all of that and just got some clarity around your business, it sounds like. Yeah. So, the, and there's a worksheet online that you can get, the story brand worksheet that will walk you through, but you create your character. Who's your character? That's your reader, right? They have a problem. They meet their guide. Their guide gives them a plan that gives them their call to action. And so then they avoid failure and achieve success. And you can take that and, I mean, rinse and apply to anything you want, right? 
Right. Okay, so you built your story and then you decided to dig into organic traffic and just get some of that back. How did you go about doing that? Just looking at keywords, trying to find keywords that I can rank for, posts that I can write, writing posts regularly, trying to post at least once a week, trying to get back on social media, even though I hate it. Right now, my nemesis is video content. I don't like creating video content just because it just takes me forever. I'm just really slow at it. So yeah. it just feel like it's it just feels like a huge time suck to me, but I'm sure I'll get better at it over time. So just posting regularly, making those, you know, giving myself a content calendar. So a lot of the stuff we've worked with together is they've created a, a schedule and everything has a due date. And so there's a lot of accountability, which I think helps. And so I have, you know, a due date for each post that I have to turn in and weekly emails that we're sending out to my email list to kind of keep those readers engaged and sending traffic back to the site and, you know, kind of, again, telling that whole story, knowing, using that brand script of what it is I'm trying to share with people. And is there anything in there that you're like, I just, I mean, I know you mentioned like, you don't like video, you don't like social media. Is there anything else that you just like want to be hands off? Like, how do you feel about Pinterest and some of those other platforms? Yeah. Pinterest, I think is tricky. I think it's obviously important. I think all the platforms are important. I think you got to diversify it, right? I say like, oh, I only want to do organic traffic, but at the same time you have to, I think, kind of put your, your feelers out in all of those places to get maybe a little bit of traffic from all of those places to grow your traffic back up rather than trying to put all your eggs in one basket, you know, and Pinterest, I have never loved Pinterest. I do use it, I think for as like a search engine kind of thing. And I think some, I think other people, it's more of a search engine than a social platform. So I think that it's helpful in that way. I pin a pin for every recipe that I do. I know people, there are people out there that do like tens of dozens of pins for one recipe. I do not have that in me, (laughs) but I still, you know, I, again, try to keep like a little bit in each area to pull traffic from each of those places because that can all kind of compound and create a bigger spike in traffic if you're getting a little bit from here, a little bit from there. If I could outsource anything in the world, it would be social media. I would pay someone when I can afford, uh, again, to pay someone to outsource social media, I will do that. (laughs) So before, prior to this traffic loss, were you not diversifying enough? Did Have you had a chance to kind of evaluate like where you were, what you were doing wrong as far as diversifying and where you're getting your traffic from? And it sounds like you've tried to do that more now, but yeah, how does that compare like before versus now? Yeah. And I was kind of in that mentality of, I don't want to play the social media game prior to the the tank and traffic because I feel like, or it felt like at the time, you don't really have control. And it's, this is still true. You don't really have control over social media. The things you own are your website and your email list, right? So you don't control who sees what you post or how that algorithm changes or drives traffic to your site or doesn't drive traffic to your site. And so I said, I'm just going to focus on organic traffic and SEO, which was going well until it wasn't. So I think that was kind of eye-opening to see that even though you don't want to, you might need to loosen the reins a little bit and you know, play in those other sandboxes, mm-hmm. even if they're not your favorite place to play, just because if you focus, I mean, if it would happen anywhere, right? You could focus it all on Pinterest and it could tank. But yeah, I think having your hands in all of those things is important rather than just any one thing. Taking a minute to chat about Meal Pro app real quick, food bloggers, artificial intelligence, algorithm changes, cookie apocalypses. These are all anxiety inducing trends and who knows what's next. If you want to future proof your income, then Meal Pro app could be the answer for you. Meal Pro app helps food bloggers to repurpose their existing content into memberships that earn recurring revenue. With their platform, you can add your name, your logo, and your color scheme, add or import your recipes with ease, share customizable meal plans and grocery lists, sell subscriptions through their platform, or connect your existing website or plugin. You can even launch your own mobile app. And the best part? 
100% no code involved. If you are looking to add a sustainable new income stream to your business, Meal Pro app might be the solution for you. Head over to eblogtalk.com forward slash resources. Click the button below the Meal Pro app logo. Go to eblogtalk.com forward slash resources to learn more and get started today. We seem to think that organic traffic is like impenetrable, like nothing's going to happen there. But as we've seen the last few years evolve, that is not necessarily the case. So diversifying your traffic, I think, is really smart. Now, I know you did like the story brand and kind of got into your person and what their story was. Outside of that, have you kind of explored other avenues for your organic traffic and new strategies there? I'm looking at a little bit more of what I'm posting right? Because we talked about how my brand is paleo. And the idea, the idea behind my blog is that it's called paleo scaleo. And the idea behind it is that we were scaling it to fit your lifestyle. So I'm not a all or nothing person. I believe that there's a little bit of a gray area in everything, right? And so for me, those recipes have always been mostly paleo, but there are not I'm not 110% all of the time, right? And I think prior, a lot of the recipes were really more heavily focused on being branded as paleo. And what I'm doing now is posting recipes that are paleo, so they fit within how I live and what I eat and what I do, but they can apply to a lot of different people, right? And a lot of like people will eat them without knowing that they're paleo or will find the recipe and will not care that it came from a paleo blog. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah that makes sense. So not necessarily looking for a paleo, but they're going to come across my recipe anyway, and it's still going to be good and it's still going to taste good to them. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So you're branching out with your keyword research a little bit and not sticking to just the paleo niche necessarily. Right. Okay. Do you have any words of encouragement? Because I know a lot of food bloggers who are in this boat that you were in currently, like they just saw a dramatic loss for whatever reason. They can't pinpoint it. They have no idea why they want an answer. Kind of like you, like change host, change theme. Let's see if, you know, little shifts in my layout, whatever, like they're trying things and it's just like, there's no answer. And it's incredibly discouraging because they put so much love and work and energy into their blogs. And now they're just like slowly building it back up. So you've been there. What encouragement do you have for them? Yeah. I'm, well, I wish they had answers for me too. <laughs> I wish I wish somebody could figure it out because, but I, it is, you know, I hate to say it, but it's, it's encouraging to know that it's not just you, mm-hmm. right? Like obviously there's something going on that none of us can p- necessarily pinpoint, but we know that it's happening. You know, and I think it's just, you kind of have to decide how dedicated you are to it. Do you want to dive back in? Because again, there's only so much you can control. You know, sometimes you won't find a cause, but I think just maybe not focusing on the next shiny new thing, because there's always a shiny new thing and finding what keeps you steady, what keeps you regular and what keeps you posting. And I think, you know, with the story brand thing, it's kind of thinking about who your target market is, who is your client, who is your audience, who are you talking to and clarifying your message for them, making sure that they, they can hear you. Now, what if you go through the story brand process or some version of that and find that like what you were saying earlier, like maybe people aren't into the like paleo scene or diet scene or fill in the blank vegan or whatever, as much anymore, and you might need to pivot. How do you decide whether to continue with your current blog and just maybe deliver different recipes or start a whole new thing? Well, I just didn't want to start over from the beginning. <laughs> I thought about rebranding a couple times and I just I just didn't want to start over. I'm like, I already built everything. I'd have to start everything from scratch. And I just I didn't think it was necessarily worth it. I don't think that what I'm doing, I don't think that my niche is necessarily dead. I think it's just like the recipes I'm posting are still paleo. They're just, I'm not shouting it from the rooftops like, mm-hmm. hey, this is paleo, come make it. Yeah. It just, the ingredients happen to be paleo. Right. So that's really kind of the the take that I've 
gone. And then I, you know, I advertise them as gluten-free and dairy-free. And those are more, I think, in the allergen-friendly space, which I think people are more aware uh, of these days. Yeah. Right? I think you go to restaurants and it's like, oh, I'm allergic to this, I'm allergic to that. So focusing more on that, I think, than advertising it as a specialty. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, there are options. You can go your route and just kind of like keep your brand, maybe pivot within your brand. You could also rebrand. I know that that is intimidating for a lot of people. And another option, like you could start an entirely separate second site and keep your other site active. So it's not like you have to just kill your blog. Like there are options available depending on what you have the resources for and all of that, but everyone's going to, you know, align with something different there. Yeah. And I think it just depends on where you want to focus your time and energy and how much, how much time do you have to dedicate to it? Right. I mean, everybody's got other things in their lives and different amounts of time that they can, they can give to it. So I think you just have to kind of sit back and do a little bit of self-reflection and say, okay, realistically, where am I? What can I give this right now? And, you know, how much time do I want to give this right now? Is it worth fighting for and getting back up or, you know, pivoting and trying something different? Also to acknowledge that if you're in the food blogging game long enough, this is going to happen. Like, I mean, it's if you get by without it happening, you're super lucky. But this happens to all of us. I think we can all, like by all, I mean, if we've been doing this for five plus years or so, we can look back and pinpoint a date or a month or a year when we experience the same thing. And it's devastating. So just acknowledging that you're not alone and that this happens frequently and we don't always know the reason why. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. And if you want to stay in the game, you've got to pick yourself up and just keep moving like Jessica did and do the things that serve you and your business and pivot as needed. And I know, like you said earlier, it's somehow comforting to know that it's not just you, that other people experience this as well. We don't want them to go through it, but it is kind of nice to know that, right? Yeah. And food blogging, like, I hate to say this, but food blogging, it sounds silly when I say it out loud, but it's kind of cutthroat. <laughs> you know, like, they're a dime a dozen, honestly. You know, there's so many out there and it's tough to figure out how to make yours stand out, how to make it how to make people hear you, you know, what, how are you different from the other 5 million food blogs out there? And why should people listen to you instead of someone else? And so I think that's another thing that deserves acknowledgement and knowing that it's hard. I mean, you have to work hard to make yourself stand out of the crowd. And I think something to go along with that is like, you keep showing up. You don't stop showing up. Unless it doesn't serve your life anymore, then of course, you know, don't show up anymore. But sure, but I think that's most of the game, right? I mean, if you show up every day and somebody else shows up every other day. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so true. You're gonna beat that person out. So just keep going. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And even without a dramatic traffic loss, like you said, it's cutthroat. It's hard. It is not an easy job. It seems like from the sidelines that it would be just easy peasy, kind of chill, relaxed job. But we all know it is that is not the case. And I think that's kind of the theme of our whole chat. This happens. And and people say, what do you do? And you're like, I'm a food blogger. And they're like, oh. oh. And you're like, oh, I feel silly for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a joke. I really like, I actually have a website. <laughs> yes. The you look know? you get sometimes, right? Like, oh, you're a food. Like, is that recipes. It's so funny that I, we still need to explain this. Well, and it's, I feel like it's hard to find the right way to mm -hmm. present it too. Right. I'm, yeah. I, I, I've started saying I run a recipe blog mm. or I run a recipe website and people like, for whatever reason, if you don't say food blog, they seem to take it a little bit more seriously. Yeah. They're like, Oh, that's cool. How do you make money? <laughs> like, right. <laughs> oh, you know, it's like this series of questions you can predict. Food media is something I've started exploring, saying instead of food blogging, like food media, because then like media just seems more professional somehow. So I don't know. I'm still experimenting too. Mine evolves all the time. I'm constantly saying different things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. What else do you have like 
kind of, you know, we have the gist of what happened and how you picked yourself up and some strategies and ways to think and ways to just keep moving. What else do we need to know if anyone listening is experiencing anything similar? I think just, you know, kind of remind yourself why you started it in the first place. Does that still ring true to you? Is that still something you want to, you want to follow? And I think, you know, finding what keeps you motivated, that's going to be different for everybody. What's really worked for me is working with a marketing agency that holds me accountable. That's what I needed at the time to kind of be my swift kick in the butt to get moving again was the accountability of other people to say, okay, this is due. Where is it? Right. Mm -hmm. We need to move forward with all of these things and we can't do that until you create this content. And so having that and that schedule and that those, de those deadlines really have what is what has helped me. I'm not saying that's right for ever, everyone. I'm just saying that finding the thing that gives you that swift kick that motivates you to get you back on track, I think, and just working to identify what that is for you. Even if it's an accountability buddy, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be a marketing firm. It can be someone you trust and who is in the, the business as well and just keeps you on track. Yeah. And even setting deadlines for yourself, you know, or coming up with a, a calendar of when you're going to post things and, you know, just making sure that you have that ready to go when you say you're going to have it ready to go. Yeah. You know, we always say like, we would never talk to our friends the way we talk to ourselves. Yes. Right. Oh, so I think about like, <laughs> you know, show up for yourself the way that you would show up for somebody else, you know, mm, it's powerful. Just keep showing up and keep, keep doing it. Get back to where you were if that's where you want to go. Something else to keep in mind is that a lot of people will give up. So I always think of like, the competition is less because I'm not willing to give up and you're not willing to give up and people listening are not willing to give up. So the people who aren't listening are giving up. So the pool is thinning, right? And the pool is thinning. Yes. Well, it's funny. I actually, I posted a recipe. I did an update yesterday on an old recipe of mine that needed updating. And I did new photos and I did all new content and updated the whole thing. And I had done some research on a couple places I was going to send another blogger was linking to a very old recipe that was for the same thing, but mine looked better and <laughs> was a better post. She was like posting to Food Network or something. And I was going to send her the link and say, hey, I see that you're linking to this post. Would you check out mine and consider using my link instead? But then I did some research on her site and like she flatlined about a year ago. Oh, no. Hasn't done anything. And so I was like, okay, yeah, that's one down. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's kind of what you're talking about, right? Like the pool will thin. Yep. And eventually the cream will rise to the top. We're not wishing for people to kill their blogs. That's not what I'm no, saying at all. all. I, I think if you've got it in you and you like some people do and some people don't. And if you're showing up here to eat blog talk to listen to this episode, you've got it in you and you're not going to give up, but some people will and that's fine. But like around COVID, we all know that there was a huge surge of food bloggers starting blogs. And it was almost like, oh my gosh, what is happening? There's so much new competition now. And like the keywords were being grabbed. And so now I feel like with all of these dramatic shifts and changes and things that are popping up, some people just can't handle that. Like it's too much. It's too cutthroat. So that's good news for those of us who are not willing to give up. And I think if you've been around a while and then, you know, on a, a bunch of other blogs have popped up and they'll get tired, eventually yeah. they'll taper off. And if you're still there, you'll be, you know, what's left standing. So. Oh my gosh, that's so true. This was so great. And I hope it gave encouragement to anyone who has been through this or, or who is going through this right now. I think it is unfortunately a very common theme in our industry but thank you for sharing your story, Jessica, and just being vulnerable and like, this is what happened and it wasn't fun, but I kept going and, you know, here's why you should too. So thank you so much for all of this. Yeah, you're very welcome. Do you have either a favorite quote or words of inspiration to leave us with today? So one of my favorite quotes that I've been one of my favorites for years, my whole life, I feel like it applies to everything. I actually found it when I originally started running half marathons and it was, it never gets easier. You just get better. Oh, but I feel like that can apply to so many things and especially this situation, right? Yeah. 
the job itself isn't going to get easier. You're just going to get better at it and more seasoned at it, the more time you put into it and the more, you know, experience you get. And increase that stamina and all the good things. Yeah. Amazing. Great way to end. We will put together a show notes page for you, Jessica. If you want to look at those, you can go to eatblogtalk.com forward slash paleo scaleo. Tell everyone where they can find you, Jessica. You can find me online at paleoscaleo.com. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Pinterest, all as paleoscaleo as my handle. Awesome. And that's it. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much for being here today. And thank you for listening, food bloggers. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Eat Blog Talk. Please share this episode with a friend who would benefit from tuning in. I will see you next time.